Guys, so in this video, let us look at the complications and treatment of uh, rigmatogenous retinal detachment. So first of all, let's take a recap of what we have seen so far. We saw what retinal detachment or separation means. So basically, in the layers of the retina, we saw that between this pigment epithelium, right, and the other layers of the retina, here the gap will form, okay. So this is the retinal separation or retinal detachment. So the pigment epithelium gets detached from the neurosensory retina. So that has been depicted in this image, right. So the pigment epithelium on one side, everything else on the other side. So there is some gap formed between the layers of the retina. There are three types of retinal detachment. You have the rigmatogenous or primary retinal detachment, tractional or uh, tractional retinal detachment, exudative retinal detachment. We saw that the rigmatogenous primary uh, retinal detachment is the most common type of um, detachment. So basically here, what happens? There is a retinal break. First of all, it starts there. There is a retinal break. The vitreous humor, which is actually very gelatinous, it will liquefy and it will seep through this retinal break and it will go and sit between that space, between that pigment epithelium and the other layers. That space, it will go and sit. So that will become something called a subretinal fluid, right? So basically all this happens because of rapid eye movement in people who have aphakia, myopia, pseudophakia, trauma, etc. Okay. So basically dynamic vitreoretinal traction. So between the retina and the vitreous, some traction because of that and also some degeneration in the retina. So all these are predisposing factors which can lead to this rigmatogenous or primary retinal detachment. Okay. So basically we have seen all this. Then we saw how to detect the location, link of rule and so many other rules are there. Then we saw the symptoms. Symptoms will be some uh, black spots like this and photopsia that is a sensation of flashes of light. Some other uh, features that symptoms of detached retina will be loss of localized relative loss of field of vision, sudden appearance of dark cloud or veil in front, sudden painless loss of vision, painless loss of vision. Remember this is a painless loss of vision, okay, painless loss of vision. So basically, uh, rigmatogenous retinal detachment, the clinical features we saw, that is uh, uh, the symptoms we saw. Now we are looking at the signs. Signs, external examination will be normal. The intraocular pressure will be slightly uh, lower or normal. There will be Marcus gun pupil that you saw here, the reflex, light reflex. Then um, a plain examination uh, will show grayish reflex, okay in the quadrant of the detached retina. Ophthalmoscopy, you can do direct and indirect. Indirect is better using scleral indentation, that is better. So a freshly detached retina will show gray reflex, retinal breaks, will, we have seen the horseshoe break and all that. The horseshoe tear, the round retinal tear, anterior dialysis, all this we saw. Then we saw that there can be in the vitreous, anterior vitreous, tobacco dust, Schaffer sign, etc. Right guys, we have seen all this. Then um, old in old retinal detachment, you will see uh, retinal uh, thinning, etc. Then uh, in, if you do visual field charting, you will see scotoma, right? You will see scotoma in visual field charting. If you do electroretinography, it will be absent or it can be subnormal. Ultrasonography will confirm the diagnosis. So now let us start off with the contents of this video. Rigmatogenous retinal detachment complications. What are the complications? So basically in long standing cases of um, rigmatogenous retinal detachment, there can be complications which are like proliferative vitreoretinopathy. Proliferative vitreoretinopathy. Okay. Complicated cataract can happen. Uveitis. And P. Thesis bulbi. Okay. What is this? This is nothing but shrunken or non-functional eye, guys. Uveitis, you know, that is uh, inflammation of this. What is uvea? Void ciliary body iris, they are calling as uvea. Uveitis. Okay. So, all these are the complications of RRD. That is rigmatogenous retinal detachment. Okay. So, let's move on to the treatment. Guys, we are moving on to the treatment of rigmatogenous retinal detachment. So basically, how will you treat? What is the principle? You know it started off with retinal break. So they will try to seal the retinal break. They will reduce the vitreous traction on the retina. 
<clears throat> they will remove this uh, sub retinal fluid and they will drain the sub retinal fluid and flatten out this retina and internal or external tamponade tamponade seems to be something like a plug guys so now let us look at this uh, uh, treatment of uh, this let us look at the first step here sealing of retinal breaks this can be done by <clears throat> cryocoagulation or photocoagulation or diathermy okay so cryocoagulation photo or photo photo coagulation or diathermy okay so basically uh, we are reading the textbook please understand here all the retinal breaks should be detected accurately localized and sealed by producing aseptic chorioretinitis okay how will you produce this so how will you produce this aseptic chorioretinitis by cryocoagulation photocoagulation or di di diathermy okay so basically you are doing what produce by producing how will you seal the retinal break produce what is called as aseptic aseptic chorio retinitis okay by cryocoagulation photocoagulation or diathermy so you can see here cryocoagulation they have shown here so cryo so you can see here this is tip is minus 70 degree centigrade freezing the tissue on contact okay so the tissue gets frozen frozen on contact with this cryo so basically it is minus 70 degree centigrade this is some what is this vision okay direct vision under indirect ophthalmoscopy so cryocoagulation is utilized with scleral buckling and pneumo pneumo retinopexy with endo laser photocoagulation is used during the vr surgery okay this vr surgery is something else hold on we'll come to that hopefully you have understood sealing of retinal break with cryotherapy okay now we will move on to drainage of the subretinal fluid so you can see here drainage of the subretinal fluid they are doing here here you can see the drainage of the subretinal fluid so this is the subretinal fluid right in this white space whatever you are seeing is the subretinal fluid so they are draining it okay so basically this allows immediate apposition between the sensory retina and the retinal pigment epithelium so as soon as you remove this what will happen so you already know what exactly the problem is right so the fluid is where the fluid is here between the pigment epithelium and the other layers so now this fluid is a subretinal fluid and you will drain it right okay so basically drainage of subretinal fluid it allows immediate apposition between the sensory retina and retinal pigment epithelium Subretinal fluid drainage is done very carefully by inserting a fine needle through the sclera and choroid into the subretinal space and allowing C, uh, SRF to drain away. SRF drainage may not be required in some cases. So let us look at how exactly are they are telling this. So basically, what they are telling is you have to take a fine needle, go through the sclera, then go through this uh, choroid. So this is choroid, right? Go through the choroid, go through the sclera, go through the choroid, then you will reach the retina. Okay, then you will drain the subretinal fluid next we are moving on in treatment maintenance of the chorio retinal apposition so basically go back to the diagram here wherever you have the diagram see here so basically here outside what you have outside is the sclera then you have the choroid then you have the retina so what they are trying to do is between the choroid and the retina they are trying to maintain some apposition apposition maintenance of chorio retinal apposition this is required at least for couple of weeks so how will they accomplish this apposition so they want to maintain this sticking between the chorion and the retina so how can they accomplish this so they have some things called as scleral buckling so they have what is called as the scleral buckling okay scleral buckling pneumatic retinopexy pars plana vit tractomy endo laser photocoagulation internal tamponade so first let us look at scleral buckling so here you can see the sclera they are taking it and tying it together kind of a thing scleral buckling okay so basically what happens here the inward indentation of sclera 
so they are doing inward indentation of sclera to provide external tamponade so the kind of external tamponade they are giving here by inward indentation of sclera this is widely used to achieve the mentioned goal the goal is to choreo retinal opposition right so in simple cases of primary retinal detachment they can use this scleral buckling guys scleral buckling is achieved by inserting an x plant that is a silicon sponge or solid silicon band with the help of mattress type sutures applied in the sclera so they are including something inside they are putting some silicon sponge or so solid silicon band okay radially oriented x plant is most effective in sealing an isolated hole so they are saying here this explant if it is radially oriented it is most effective in sealing an isolated hole if there is an isolated hole a radially oriented explant is most effective okay and if there is breaks involving three or more quadrants a circumferential explant is indicated okay so let's try to understand all this so basically in this they are talking about some explant a silicon sponge explant that is a silicon sponge silicon sponge or solid silicon band okay so if it is an isolated hole what type of explant you will use radially oriented explant and if it is involving if the break involves three or more quadrants you will use what is an circum circumferential explant this is an encirclage okay Okay, so where are we? We are looking at the treatment for what today? Regmatogenous retinal detachment. In that we have finished sealing of retinal break using that cryocoagulation, etc. Then drainage of subretinal fluid. Now in the maintenance of chorioretinal opposition, we saw scleral buckling. Now just one is over, still three are there. New, oh, still only two are there. Great. Pneumatic retinopexy and pars planar vitrectomy. We have to see after that. That's all over. Okay. So pneumatic retinopexy means what? Look at this, pneumatic something with the air, right? Pneumatic retinopexy is simple outpatient procedure. It can be used to fix. Okay, if there is a superior retinal detachment. What they will do? This is a gas bubble actually. This gas bubble they have only introduced into the vitreous. So this gas bubble will go and put some pressure here. So this will establish the choreo retinal opposition. Okay, so this is better in superior. If it is superior retinal detachment, they can use this. They are telling in a fresh tattoo, in a fresh retinal detachment. Okay, <clears throat> or even if it is two small holes extending over less than two o'clock hour area in the upper two thirds of peripheral retina. So all these specific things you'll have to look at from the textbook. In this technique, what they are doing after sealing the break with cryopexy. an expanding gas bubble so after doing some cryopexy they are putting an expanding gas bubble here an expanding gas bubble bubble this gas bubble is expanding expanding gas bubble okay this will be injected into the vitreous so they are only injecting this gas bubble into the vitreous okay then what they will do they will ask the patient to be in a proper position that time this gas bubble it will put the pressure right so the patient has to be in proper position so that the gas bubble remains in contact with the tear for 5 to 7 days okay so this is another one what is this pneumatic retinopexy rheumatic retinopexy now last one we will go here pars plana vitrectomy endolaser photocoagulation internal tamponade i think this is where they were talking about uh, they are talking about many things here So look at this pars plana vitrectomy. Vitrectomy means you are removing the vitreous, right? So that's what it looks like. This is they are removing the vitreous, right? Vitrectomy. So here they are talking about some light here. So they are putting some light here, and here this is a vitrector. It is going to remove the vitreous. So let's read this. This procedure is indicated for all complicated 
primary retinal detachments that is in this RRD that is a rigmatogenous retinal detachment the complicated ones they can use this and all tractional also you can use this tractional retinal detachment also you can use this procedure presently even in uncomplicated primary retinal detachment the primary vitrectomy is being used with increasing frequency because they think it is giving better results they're saying this is giving better results interestingly let us look at the procedure here guys what are we looking at we're looking at the vitrectomy right vitrectomy what is that we are looking at pars plana pars plana vitrectomy endolaser photocoagulation and internal tamponade okay so basically what they are doing here so the first thing they are telling is three step three sorry three port three port vitrectomy pars plana this is done to remove all membranes and vitreous and to clean the edges of the retinal breaks. Interesting. Then internal drainage of subretinal fluid through existing retinal break. Through the existing retinal break, they are going to remove, they are going to drain the subretinal fluid. Now, when you remove the subretinal fluid, then definitely you will it will become flat. So the flattening of the retina is done by injecting silicon oil or perfluorocarbon liquid. So they have removed the vitreous, they have drained the subretinal fluid, they have flattened this retina. Now they are, they are filling this with, looks like they are filling it with silicon oil or perfluorocarbon liquid. Okay. Then endolaser is applied around the area of posterior rhinotomy, retinal tears and holes to create chorioretinal adhesions. To, for these chorioretinal adhesions, they are putting what? Endolaser. Then they will tamponate the retina internally. So some kind of a plug is it. Silicon oil is left inside or is exchanged with some long acting gas. So here long acting gas, you already saw that gas bubble thing, right? Or they can put some silicon oil also. They will leave it inside. So this will create type of a tamponade. Okay. So they will use gases like sulfur hexafluoride, SF6, sulfur hexafluoride or perfluoropropane, C3F6, F8. Okay. So what and all are the gases they are using here? Internal tamp tamponade. From inside they are trying to plug it. So they are using SF6 that is sulfur hexafluoride or C3F6. C3F6 is what? Perfluoro F8 it is C3 F8 perfluoro propane okay propane three carbon is propane right so what are they using an internal tamponade is used here they will remove the vitreous they will remove some membranes they will drain the subretinal fluid they will flatten the retina they will put some silicon oil inside or they can put some gases inside they will put endolaser so that they can create chorioretinal adhesions internal tamponade they are putting here using some silicon oil or they can put some gases here so how is the internal tamponade done silicon oil okay or this gas, what is this? Sulfur hexafluoride or this one is what? Perfluoropropane. Okay. Guys, this is totally our understanding of what the textbook says. You will have to look at some higher level videos to understand all this better. Okay. And read your textbook. The prognosis of surgery are good. Mostly their retinal attachment is achieved. But if macula is detached, then recovery of central vision will be incomplete. It's usually incomplete. Profile axis, how do you prevent a retinal uh, detachment, uh, especially a regmatogenous retinal detachment, laser photocoagulation or cryotherapy of retinal breaks, okay, or lattice degeneration. So in people who have this aphakia, uh, myopia, all those people who are high risk, you can always keep looking out for these retinal breaks and timely application on these retinal breaks. If you're seeing any vision issues, guys, always be quick in approaching the doctor. Okay. That's all for now, guys. We have finished the treatment, prognosis, profile axis, etc. of even the complications we have seen in this video. Of what? Of the regmatogenous retinal detachment. Bye-bye.